How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this really cool text animation. We're going to be using some really fun UV tricks and some camera tracking sort of camera rigging tricks to play with this as well. If you want to grab the project file for the render you're seeing right now, you can get it in the description for a dollar. Everyone on Patreon tier one will be getting that for free. If you don't know about the Patreon, you get two exclusive tutorials a month. These two animations you're seeing right now I taught in April, and you can grab that on Patreon right now. You also get project files from tutorials and monthly procedural materials created by Syncretic 3D. Uh, last month, he created these really amazing crystals and created the procedural materials for that. You can check that out along with everything else linked in my description. Now let's get into the tutorial. All right, so we're gonna start in a blank document uh, and we're gonna go here to cycles just like that. And I'm gonna hit Shift A, we're gonna get, click on a plane. I'm gonna hit S5 and then control A and apply scale. I'm gonna hit tab here and click U to unwrap it. And we're just gonna click unwrap. We're gonna be using a little bit of image texturing here. So we wanna unwrap this right now. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click subdivide. I'm gonna hit this little dialog down here and click, I mean, and type in 100. And we're gonna subdivide it by 100 along with adding a subdivision surface modifier. We're gonna put our render setting here at three. We're gonna subdivide it by three. If your computer can't handle it, you can bring it down to one or two. Uh, doesn't really matter. So now we're gonna go ahead and go straight into shading this guy. But first, we need to actually get our image textures. So we're gonna be using cc0textures.com. They're royalty-free textures. They don't require credit, anything like that. You can just grab them, use them for commercial work, everything you want. So many really, really high quality materials here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click explore the assets. And then I'm gonna type in rock, R-O-C-K. I want a uh, rocky floor, but because this is of course your render, you can do whatever type of texture you want. You can even use a wooden texture or uh, um, you know anything like that. I'm gonna be using this really dark rock texture right here. And I'm gonna download the 4K textures. Now, while we're here online, let's go ahead and go to hdrihaven.com, and then I'm gonna go and search Knight in IGHT. This is currently my favorite HDRI, so it's right here, however you wanna pronounce that word, O2, and we're gonna click that and download the 4K version of that HDRI. So I'm gonna go back here. We already have everything downloaded and in here, so I'm gonna click into shading, and I'm gonna click new. If you have the Node Wrangler add-on, enabled that comes with blender by default just minimize these i'm gonna click on the principle hit Control t i'm gonna bring them up by hitting g and i'm gonna go and open this and then here on my desktop i'm gonna click on the 4k textures and here we have the color so i'm gonna double click that now now while we're at it in this stage i'm gonna go ahead and save this file here and i'm gonna just call it tut and we're gonna save this here now we have this, we want to go to the mapping. Personally, I want this texture to be a little smaller. So we're going to tile it by two here on the scale. So now we have it doubled up um, here. And that's kind of as much tiling as I'm comfortable with at the moment. So I'm going to highlight these two, hit G to bring them back. So I'm going to minimize this guy. I'm going to hit Shift D, bring the vector in. I'm going to bring that down and I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, roughness. And I'm going to plug the color into the roughness here just like this. Now, I'm gonna go ahead, save my file. Sometimes this crashes, so I'm gonna go ahead and click this, and then right down here in my settings, we're gonna go ahead, and right here on displacement, we're gonna to go to displacement and bump. You must have the Cycles engine actually um, turned on, otherwise you won't see these displacements um, settings, but I'm gonna click displacement and bump. Now it's gonna be doing that type of thing. We're gonna go back here, and the reason why we're using cycles instead of EV because actual node-based displacement doesn't work in EV at the moment. Now, if you really want to use EV, you certainly can. You just won't have that displacement. Just use a bump node. So I'm going to go ahead and get a displacement DIS, displacement node, plug this here to the displacement. I'm going to go ahead and take this guy, shift D, and then I'm going to take this plug vector here. I'm gonna get this, click that little button, and I'm gonna get the displacement. I'm gonna click on the render button here, and on this little drop down, I'm gonna click scene lights and scene world so that we get our HDRI. 
So now we're gonna get that HDRI going on. We're just one of the defaults. That's not the night one we downloaded. We'll implement that in a second. So what we're gonna do is just plug this color into the mid-level here. So now we have all the displacement craziness happening. So I'm gonna go here to the scale and I'm gonna type in 0.1 on my scale just so we get a little bit of actual geometry displacing here. You can see how it's really low poly, but when we actually render it, our render steps um, will be here at three. So you won't actually get that um, you know, low poly look here. So now that we have that, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure to save my file. Let's go ahead and start getting our text here. So I'm gonna hit Shift A, and I'm going to go ahead and get in my uh, text right here. So in the text, I'm gonna hit this little green A here, and I'm gonna go here on alignment and click center and center, just like that. Now in tab, to actually edit your text, you can type in whatever you want. I'm gonna type in blend, just like that, nothing special. And then here on geometry, we're gonna go ahead and extrude it a little bit, um, just like this. And then um, we're gonna go here on the depth. Now we're here on the depth, you can add a little bit of beveling, and I'm gonna bring this guy above our plane, just barely intersecting so now that we have that now if you want to go ahead and change your font you certainly can just click font and then click this little guy here should bring you a dialogue of all your available fonts if it doesn't just go online and type in um daft font or fonts 101 they're all free fonts you can have a lot of fun with them i'm just going to pick a random one here let's go with this one and then now we have a really cool font happening now remember to bevel that's something really important i really want beveling happening because when we add in our uh, lighting we want that to catch the actual bevel if you don't do that uh, this tutorial won't quite work it'll work a little bit but the beveling really is what sells it so now that we have that let's go ahead and start making our materials so let's click on shading and then i'm going to click on the uh this button here now you will get a little bit of lag when you click on uh, the materials just because it has to load that really big image texture so just keep that in mind click on new and then I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna bring this up, and then I'm gonna go bring roughness down, bring my transmission all the way up, so now we have some glass, and then let's make our lighting. Shift A, I'm gonna get a MIX, we're gonna get a mix shader, plug that there, we're gonna get an emission, and then I'm gonna pick my color, so a really nice fiery orange, and plug that there. I'm gonna get my mix shader, bring it up there, and I'm gonna get a color ramp, C-O-L, color ramp, just to give you some more control, we may not even use it. And then let's get a layer weight. So plug that and use the, uh, I'm gonna use Fresnel. So now we have this, I'm gonna bring my strength at say 50. And then I'm gonna go here to the cycles view because layer weight looks different in EV than it does cycles. So I'm gonna click on cycles here. And then now we have some really nice glowing text here, but we're gonna make it look better. So we're gonna take our blend and bring it closer to the ground, closer to the bottom. So something like that, maybe 0.01, maybe bring it up another notch if you want. Something like this. Now we have some really nice glowing text. I'm gonna hit this drop down up here and go back to our scene world, our scene lights, and let's go ahead and get our HDRI working with our scene. So I click on here, click on the world, click on color, environment texture. Now I'm gonna click on open, here on the desktop, I'm gonna click on our HDRI. So now our HDRI is affecting the scene, it's lighting it really well. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is add in a area light to this scene. So I'm gonna go ahead and save here while we're at it. Um, we're gonna go and pick a area light and the area light's gonna shoot this direction. So I'm just gonna to go to material preview, shift A, get a light, get an area light, I'm gonna hit the drop down and click scene world, scene lights, so we know what we're doing. I'm gonna hit G and just kind of move him to where we want it to go. I'm gonna hit R twice to rotate it and have it point directly at our text. Bring it up. Now we're gonna come back, kind of go to the camera view we're gonna be at. Go back to cycles. I'm gonna make my color a nice blue and make my power at like 4,000. And now we have a really cool scene so far. Now we're gonna go ahead and start working on our camera animation. So this is the really cool part in my opinion. I think it's really fun and interactive. So Shift A, 
we're gonna first get our object that our camera is going to point at. So let's go ahead and get an empty plane axis and just keep it right there. Now I'm gonna get in a camera and don't touch the camera, leave it where it's at. We're gonna go ahead and get a curve, a circle. So we wanna click on the camera, click on the constraints over here, add object constraint and click follow path. On target, we're gonna click Bezier circle. And now we can click on our circle and bring it up. We have our camera, we have our circle, but we need to add another constraint to the camera. So add camera and we'll click um, track two. I'm gonna click the target, which is our empty. And so now, no matter where we put our circle, you can see how that camera is locked on to the position that that empty is touching. So that's really, really cool. So we can actually do a little bit of fun animation here. So here on the circle, you can see how it's kind of low poly in a way. So we're gonna just bring up those resolutions right there to the top. And let's go ahead and start animating. So I'm gonna bring this Bezier circle really, really far up. So something like, something like this, all the way up here. And then I'm gonna go click on my camera, click on the camera here, in the constraints right here on the follow path, we're gonna bring it over here. So what that's doing is taking my camera, if we can bring it back to the center here, it's actually bringing our camera in this circle on this, uh, track here and so that's one thing we're going to do to add some motion so we're going to start here and then we're going to bring this to the ground so one thing i'm going to do is i'm going to bring my focal length pretty far up something like this and then i'm going to scale my plane here just like that all right so go to your edit preferences and then here in animation make sure your default interpolation is on bezier so what we're going to do now is take our uh, Bezier circle and we'll first actually let's animate this constraint here. So go make sure we're at the beginning of our timeline. So what we'll do is we'll click keyframe and then I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, maybe right about that long. So 55, maybe bring it a little bit farther. And then I'm gonna bring my offset and kind of have my composition something like this. I like that. So now we can kind of check that out. Looks really good. Now we're gonna have some fun and click on the Bezier circle. Go to the transform. I'm gonna hit this right here, get a keyframe on the Z. Right about there and we're gonna bring it down to the ground like this. And then if you don't like your exact composition, you can bring your empty around and kind of move it. So We'll click back here on the Bezier circle, add keyframe. So now we have this really awesome animation, super easy, looks really stunning. And if we wanna see it in the material preview, we have this right here. Now, of course, in cycles, it's going to look different. Here's how it's looking so far in cycles. Now let's go ahead and actually animate the these letters blinking in. Here's how we're gonna do that. We're gonna hit tab, go to the top, sorry, not tab, sorry, we're gonna hit the tilde key. That uh, the tilde key is right above the tab key for me. So I'm gonna hit the tilde key, go to the top, um, and I'm gonna click on my text, make sure the text is selected, right click and convert to mesh. So it's no longer gonna be editable text. The reason why we're doing that is we're gonna make this, uh, use the UV map we're about to make to animate the text. It's uh, a feature I showed in one of my last uh, frequent tutorials. So we're gonna hit U to unwrap and we're gonna project this text from view. Now this is one of my favorite little tricks. We're gonna click on the UV editing and here is our text. And then you can highlight it and you can scale it up, but we actually wanna scale these individual letters. So right up here, you can click individual origins and now it treats each letter like it's by itself. The reason why we wanna do that is I'm gonna hit S zero and do that. Now there's a couple little problems we have is see some of these letters have individual little pieces. So we're just gonna sort of treat these um, like they're one thing. So I'm gonna click this little letter here. I'm gonna hit G and make sure all the UVs are you know pretty close together. I'm gonna hit G right here, and move it on top of each other. So we can have that like that. Now this is a really kind of janky way to do it, but it's, uh, it's how it works. Move that. I'm gonna hit G and move these right here. And we also wanna space them 
the same consistency so the animation timing is really uh, consistent. So I'm gonna move it here. So just go and take your UVs of each letter and make sure all the, your little dots of each letter. So this would be the B. The B somehow is uh, in four pieces. So now you're gonna have that. So do that on all your UVs. So now all my UVs are spaced out correctly. So you have, if you can't see it here, here's, our, here's all my letters. So B, L, E, N, D, all associated uh, UVs are all in the same little puny little dot. And that's because we scaled them down to zero. So that's what we want here for our UVs. So now that that's done, we can go back into shading and uh, manipulate those UVs to animate the way we want. So I'm gonna click on this here so we can kind of see this. And then let's bring the emission over here and let's have some fun. So I'm gonna take this color ramp, shift D, and I'm gonna do that. Take the white portion and I'm gonna make it that orange that we like. And I'll plug the color into the color. So you may have seen me do this a couple times before, but this is this if this is your first time, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a uh, gradient here, gradient texture, and keep the color like that. And then um, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hit Control T, of course, having the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, we're gonna use the UV socket because we just did that UV stuff. And now it's going to do that. And if we bring in our color ramp, you can see that fades through really cool. So what I'll do here is actually hit the drop down, flip the color ramp, and um, animate it like that. So bring it in. So I'm gonna bring it in till the orange disappears. Actually, we need to be doing this in cycles to make sure that it is correct. So right here, it seems to turn on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, bring a timeline up, click this, click timeline, and then we're gonna start the animation. So I'm gonna go back to the material preview, right click on position, insert for keyframe, and um, one, two, three, I'm gonna go maybe around there and bring my animation all the way in, right click, insert keyframe. So now if we press play, animates in just like that. It's a really cool speed. I'm gonna hit zero to so we see how our camera view looks. Go back here on layout, they animate in, and then in cycles, this is how it looks here in cycles. So we have this really, really cool look. Now, I'm unhappy with how the layer weight is looking here on the edges, and there's a simple fix to that. And so we'll go back here to shading, and I'm gonna turn the uh, timeline off. So right here on the layer weight, I'm gonna switch it to facing. So now it's gonna give you a more even looking layer weight, and then I'm gonna play with the blend a little bit. And uh, now we have a really nice looking layer weight. And then we can bring up our emission strength as well to 150. So now we have this really nice looking thing. And then we'll go back here to layout just to see how everything looks here in cycles. We'll go to this frame. So it looks really, really good. So in this frame, it's all done. Last thing I'm going to do is add in some depth of field. So I'm gonna click on the camera click on the little green camera here. I'm gonna click depth of field. I'm gonna go ahead and select that empty that's actually controlling the camera angle. And then I'm gonna bring my blades up to 20 and my f-stop at 0 0.3, actually maybe 0 0.1. And now we have this really cool microscopic looking uh, render. Now the animation stops at around 70. So I'm gonna bring it over here to 87, um, maybe 90. And then I'm gonna right here on end type in 90 so there's only 90 frames in this animation and then i'm going to click on material preview just to preview this animation and we're done so that's how we make this animation right here now if you want to export it out we're going to click on the little printer icon you can either choose to use a png sequence now if you want blender to compile just a, a finished video not have to deal with a png sequence for you you'll go from png to ffmpeg video this MP4, if we we'll go to encoding here, go to from this to MP4, medium quality to perceptually lossless, and you'll go to render, render animation. So there you go, that's how you make this animation. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.